Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalee the Dunn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're a 333, and now we're going to have a match between Andrew Y2K and Dorsch on Iced Coffee, which hasn't really been played much in a while. Not sure why. Everyone seemed to like it when it came out, but I guess people either got bored of it or just decided that the size was not really suitable. Not sure why, but yeah, that is the case, I guess. I mean, I think it's pretty good, but I'm biased since I made it, so... Yeah. Actually, I don't think it's that great. I think I could make a better map. I've made better maps. It's still a pretty good map, though. I do like it. Just kind of wish that the map making tools were more... There's been a lot of work in the map making tools. I'm really excited to see where those go. I think it's the best way of putting it. Especially with Guyup's work. Guyup's work has been really cool for CNED. I really look forward to see where that goes. And, yeah, I really want that to get, like, all the SSMF textures as something you can just plot down in the editor. and just, As it is, seen it's already pretty powerful, but that would just put it over the edge, and I'd probably just be making maps forever. If it weren't for the fact that there's a lot of other dev stuff that needs doing. Anyway, a lot of talk sh shop talk aside, let's actually get to the game itself. So, it is going to be Dorsh and Andrew Y2K. We saw Andrew Y2K Actually, I haven't seen Andrew Y2K in a long time. I'm trying to remember the last time I casted a game of theirs. They're going gunship quick on the blast wing, which on this map is fairly strong, which so I'm not surprised. Dorsh going amphib. Quick ducks. No surprise there. Oh, a duck. Okay, just scouting. Quick duck for scouting. Andrew Y2K going for blast wing into banshee. Terrifying strategy that Dorsh doesn't even have a defender up. That blast wing coming in. Setting some stuff on fire. This is where the on fire thing is really good. I mean, good for the game as a whole, to be more precise. It's good for the game as a whole that stuff is on fire rather than just blown up. Because repair. There's counterplay. You can choose to repair things. Although admittedly, there's still going to be a loss of metal extractor. But it's not as extreme. That metal extractor stayed up for a longer time than it would have had the blast wings been the way they were before. And blast wings are still pretty powerful and more reliable and just better. Just everything's improved. Although, admittedly, that's still pretty damaging. Very quick early Blastwing Rush. And Duck coming around the back. No defenses in Andrew YTK's base, so that Duck does have, a f well, not quite free time getting around. I mean, the commander's still there. It's still got its little bandit gun. But, you know, damage. Still damage. Still stuff happens. And... Dorsh complaining about the defender not being able to hit the bandits on the edge. I think the it's the defender position. Actually, this these cliffs are a little weird because they're kind of they're sloped in such a way that I think there's a bit of a jaggedness along the top that may stop defenders from being able to see the blast wings just over the edge. I'm not totally sure. Like that's one of the things that I really like about well that CNED makes me excited about is that in CNED you're doing it in the engine so you can check path ability and a bunch of other stuff. I think you can place objects if you can. That's even more awesome because then you can test things like how does the defender work? Where can you place defenses? How do you set all that stuff up? There's a lot of other things you could test if that was the case. I'm fairly certain it is. I'm not 100% sure though. If it is, super awesome. If not, that seems like a good thing to add in. And now the Banshees. Let's see how they go. Scouting around, expecting Dorsh to have expanded. Little surprise there because, frankly, Dorsh kind of needed to rebuild. A lot. Andrew Y2K does have their main expand or their main base up. Still in pretty good shape. Rebuilt Metal Extractor. Still a little low on power, though. That is their current bottleneck. Both because the wind is dropping a bit. I mean, it's still, it's still worth having, but that's effectively two solars. So they still need to build more power. Dorsh, on the other hand, just got the commander and now a couple wind generators. And the Banshee's basically trying to prevent expansion from the looks of it. Probably trying to build up, like, prevent expansion, build up while they're preventing expansion. And then once they are confident they have enough numbers, go into Dorse's base and rip them to shreds. Right now, that's 2,500 health worth of Banshee's. The defenders would take out, I think, one, maybe two Banshee's. The commander wouldn't deal with much. There are no anglers up. Boys are going up because I think Dorse is expecting rapiers. Now, they're not bad against Banshees, but against Rapiers, they completely rock Rapiers. And you're right, okay, going for the Cloakabot Factory. Oh, there's an Angler, apparently. There is an Angler? There is an Angler! Just behind the Defender. My mistake. There is indeed an Angler. 
and it is indeed pretty terrifying. One Banshee down for free, defenders take out possibly another one. Andrew Y2K not willing to risk Banshees and basically donate metal. That's 100 metal right there. And I don't think anything was lost, so that worked out beautifully for Dorsch. However, Andrew Y2K is still in a fairly strong position in terms of pressure. They haven't expanded much though. Surprisingly, they never seem to have built a crane, so they're not going around the map building up metal extractors while these Banshees are out, which is one thing that's working well in Dorsch's favor. Like, Dorsch right now actually has a good opportunity to get a stronger economy. The only problem, of course, being the fact that they have to worry about defenses, but their economy right now is in a position where they can expand pretty quickly. And Andrew Watt Quay, despite the fact that they actually have a lot of pressure working for them and they could also expand quickly, they aren't. They're building some rectors, but cranes are like god tier workers. Seriously, cranes are like, if you can keep a crane alive, its only weakness, I think, is its lower build power. Because the crane build power is four, it's four metal per second rather than the typical five. It is, okay, so it's 20% longer to build anything. But it can build things anywhere. It's super fast. So on a map like this, it can just build around here. It can build over here. It's build anywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. Okay, maybe not God tier. I'm exaggerating. But cranes are still a fairly useful... Cranes are 4 BP, not 2.5 BP. Cranes aren't totally God tier, but they are still fairly powerful. Like I said, it's a 20% drop in build speed. So that is kind of the balance out. And also they're expensive. But if you can keep it alive... Go around the map, build up stuff. It's it's a good thing to have. They are powerful. Of course, conjurers also have the they have their jamming and they are cloaked, which is nice. Actually, what is the? I don't even know what the crane HP is. So conjurers four fifty. People are pointing out stuff to do with HP. Ow, oh, crane has half the HP. Okay, so that's the thing. Crane is kind of high risk, high reward. Let's put it that way. It's not god tier, but it is a good high risk, high reward option. Especially on... This map might be a bit too small. I think the corners will be okay for that. But the important thing is more is that before building the Hokebot factory, Andrew Y2K with one crane could have started expanding wildly around the map while pushing, while setting up that pressure. Whereas now, Dorsch has pretty much economic parity. Like, they're pretty good for economy right now. They're also setting up some decent harassment. Actually, that's pretty good harassment. Get rid of the Conjure. That'll be awesome. Unfortunately, the Angler, not quite enough. On its own, doesn't quite manage to do the trick. And I was exactly wrong about boys. They're actually terrible against Banshees. Against Rapiers, they're great, but Banshees just move too fast. So unfortunately, more Anglers will be necessary or stack defenses. Actually, I think Scallops might work okay against Banshees. But yeah... Scallops might work okay against Banshees. But, on and really would work well against against Glaives. That's the important thing. Is Dorsch going to go for that, though? It looks like no. Continuing with the boy Angler strategy. Which is quite surprising, actually. Continuing with the boys as well. Okay, the boys have been built already. But yeah, boy Angler against this? I don't know. I don't completely think that's a good idea. In fact, I think it's pretty obvious that that's not a particularly workable idea right now. Keeping the boys in the back in case of, say, Warrior Switch, although, I mean, Warriors are buffed, and we do see a Warrior Switch actually happening. Like, if Dorsch were to read that, I should say. That would make sense, but at this point, yeah. Scallop would probably work. And Google Frog agrees with me, which is good to have. But yeah, Scallop would... Seems like a good idea, because Banshees tend to clump up, so Scallop would just hit them all. And it's a very fast projectile, so their dodging wouldn't matter too much, and it's got a cone fire, so their dodging wouldn't matter too much. And, of course, the Glaives would just die because their raiders and the cone fire shotgun stuff would kill them super quickly. And one... Ooh, is that defender almost reloaded? No, the defender's not reloaded. That conch is dead. Oh, never mind. The defender's reloaded in time. That's weird. The defender reload is no longer piecewise. Oh, no, it is. Never mind. It's just... Yeah, it doesn't show the green dots. It used to have, didn't it used to have green dots counting up the number of missiles? I thought it did. Anyway. Doesn't really matter. The defenders are still doing their thing. But yeah, now the switch to warrior does justify boys. Boys are now going to be useful. 
Except for, of course, the fact that there's still a bunch of Banshees hovering around the map that are going to be doing a lot of damage. I haven't done anything yet, but ten Banshees is still scary. And those warriors with no real opposition getting totally torn to shreds. Oh, I see. Yeah, it is piecewise. It's just that the defenders took a little while. And they were firing as they were reloading, and of course I didn't see how that worked. Silly me. But yeah, the Banshees... Okay, looks like I actually need two Archer Volleys to kill a Banshee. My mistakes. That's... Archers don't get used very much. That's probably partly why. They would do okay against Rapiers, maybe, but not against Banshees. And boys would do really awesome against Rapiers, so yeah. And that force... Okay, so the Rays are forcing them back, but that doesn't matter. Dorsh is not being allowed to expand. And that's pretty much exactly what Andrew Bidekay wanted in the first place and what they're succeeding in doing. So Dorsh right now, like, continuing along with... Well, yeah, Boy Angler. Not shifting to Scallop, not shifting... I mean, like I said, the voice kind of makes sense for Warriors, but otherwise not shifting to anything else that would help with the current situation. Banshees are just weird. Like, if you're playing Spiders, you'd go for Redbacks. If you're playing... Amphib, I guess Scallops work pretty well. If you're playing Cloaky, then Gremlins work a bit better. But it's like, anti-air options, because of their speed, because Banshees are fairly fast, but also fairly tough, the standard anti-air options can be used as a deterrent, but as a way of actually slaughtering them is not great, necessarily. It works okay, raises work okay, but overall, like, it's a deterrent thing. But yeah, if you have any sort of riot units, those usually do the trick. Like, I mean, as point out, Redback, Scallop, Warriors, I think, can't hit air, so they do the trick. Like, any riots, because they clump up, and yeah, they're fast, but riots deal with fast. Riots don't care about fast. Levelers, I think, might have a problem. But otherwise, yeah, riots don't care about fast. They really don't. And Andrew Rod Decay is just going to get rid of this Razor no problem. Like, why worry about it? It's just going to lose a couple Banshees, get rid of a Razor. Totally worth it. And that's the thing. Razors are a deterrent. They're not going to kill, but they are going to discourage the player from trying to attack it or trying to be in that area. And they could assist a kill like that. But still, Andrew Rod Decay not even being able to use all their metal. For crying out loud, they actually don't even... <laughs> okay, just now getting that fusion reactor up. Just now being able to use all their metal, but even then they don't have enough build power being pushed into the factories to use all their metal. And even then they're pushing out as, however many banshees they're pushing out. How much do they have? Twelve, each one taking five seconds to build. And warriors round the back. The small trail that they have round the back. And fortunately, completely discounting the boy range advantage. A few of them able to get round though should help, but still. Stardust... Completely misreading that, and Dorsh throws in the towel. Completely misreading the Stardust placement, because Stardust is great against Raiders. Against Warriors, yeah, it's basically even. It's like, Stardust is essentially a Warrior on a turret. A couple Warriors takes it out, no problem. A little bit more expensive to have the Warriors, but then you also get mobility. So yeah. And, well, for defenses against Warriors... Hmm. On that cliff? Stinger is almost an idea, but I think that would be a bit, little bit excessive. Faraday would probably be terrifying, or at least annoying. I wonder if Gauss Gun would work. I think the Gauss Gun's got pretty good range. Or Newton could work. Actually, Newton's not a bad idea. I'm not kidding. Newton, Newton is annoying as heck when... Because Warriors are slow as molasses. But yeah... Getting the Scallops to get rid of the Banshees would have been the idea. Rather than the boys. Like, Scallops are awesome for that sort of thing. And a Crow coming out. Andrew Wadjuk is super cocky. Getting that Crow. I mean, 50 metal, of course they would be. But yeah, so... Stardust against Banshees makes sense. Stardust against Warriors, not so much. And that back area was... I guess they expect Banshees. It's just this map. Bots can go around the back here. That's the thing. This back area, it's harder for bots to go up, but they can go up it. So having defenses on the back is worth doing. Do you think it's a bit... Yeah, it's more pronounced in the north. It's, like, on the edge, honestly. It was one of those things that I could not easily test for. Ah, what the heck? Well. I don't know what happened. 
That was really weird. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that look at the sky. So we're going to have another match, the last match for today, which is going to be between Sprung and Flipstep on La Isla Bonita. Very glad to see that map again. And that is going to be the last match for tonight, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.